Hey, what's up, John from Dowie Farm? I just want to uh, go over my incubator setup a little bit. I just did a video on some quail that we hatched, but uh, I want to cover some important things here about hatching quail at your house or uh, wherever you're going to do this. But you want to have a couple separate situations here, <laughs> right? A couple separate options. Um, you want to have your incubator that you're going to incubate your eggs in with your with your turner and your fan and uh, your all that stuff. And I go dry until uh, about five days before before hatch and then I load that thing up with water I put sponges in the bottom <clears throat> um, under the screen and uh, I load it up pretty good <laughs> then when they're hatching lighting sucks in here when they're hatching um, at once a day I'll open up my incubator and I put them into my hatcher I guess if you're my my primary brooder or whatever um, so what I'll do is I take the ones that just hatched out of my my hatching incubator now um, because I, what I'll do is I'll remove the, the egg turner and then transfer the eggs back in. Ideally, I would have two incubators, one without an egg turner, one with. But I didn't want to buy a, another, um, get out of the light here. It's like so bright. I didn't want to buy another, I can't win, man, with the light. <laughs> I didn't want to buy another uh, temperature controller for my another one, you know, whatever, yet. And uh, until I decide what I'm going to do, I probably should just go with a better incubator, right? So I use one incubator as an incubator. And then I use a second incubator as a primary brooder, I guess you could say, my first step. So once they hatch and they're out once a day, I move them into here that doesn't have any water, all right? And there's a little bit of feed in there, but they don't really need it. That's just in case I don't get them out right away. But uh, they go about 24 hours with their yolk sac uh, nutrition, so they're good. That's almost all birds. Um, so I move them into here. And then what I'm doing is I'm letting them kind of catch their breath or bring up their strength. And I'm letting them uh, dry out, you know, before I take them out of there and I put them in the actual brooder, which is just a heat lamp and a tote and some wood chips. It's all I'm doing. And I, I rig these heat lamps up off the ceiling so they can't fall. And uh, that's a fire hazard. I'm, I'm really, I'm always very paranoid about that. But so I go into there and that's where they're going to get water with electrolyte in it and they're going to get, uh, I do a 28% uh, crumble, uh, it's a game bird crumble, <clears throat> and um, and the wood chips, when you're going to find when you move them from your primary brooder to your actual brooder, that they're going to be really wiped out still, and it could probably be a temperature swing issue, but they seem to make it, and, uh, and it starts to harden them a little bit, but they start to figure out feed and water in here, they do it on their own, um, they mimic each other, so one will go over and drink, like one's drinking right now see and then you know they start to figure it out and this guy's eating so they're sleeping they're eating they're drinking they're walking and that's all you give a shit about when it comes to these little golf ball sized quail and uh, it's funny because they look like the size of a golf ball but they're not because they're fluffy now because they're dried out so if I were just to take straight out of the incubator and throw them into here these guys would trample the shit out of them while they're trying to dry out and get their breath you know so you got to have a second step if you start getting multiple hatches, or multiple multiple day hatches, so like I started hatching Friday night, around midnight, maybe 10, and then overnight last night some hatched, today Saturday morning, or afternoon, it's the same thing, I don't know, it's just the time thing. <laughs> and then, um, so more will hatch later today, and then more will hatch tomorrow. Now, I'm pretty confident I can take them out of my primary brooder and put them into my, ha in, or into my actual brooder, okay? And these guys will be fine because they're within about 12 to 18 hours of each other. But once I get a Sunday and possibly Monday birds hatching, that's when I may want to think about either more time in there. So I'll have a little flexibility. I might pop this little window out and I'll throw a, um, a water, a small water like this through there. Okay. And it'll fit right in. And that way they'll have water in there and I'll put a little tray of food in there. That way they can catch up. And uh, once they get their legs under them and they're fluffy and they're moving around, they can go in with the rest. But I found you'll lose birds if you don't brood them in stages on the first few days. And because uh, they'll just kill each other because birds are assholes. That's why. So uh, anyway, that's what I got for you. A nice little quick tip on how to get your quail from your incubator to your brooders without massacring them. <laughs> and then my other uh, thing that I'd like to suggest too is like, as you see, I only... This is like, like a primary brooder for me because we hatch at a separate location where we keep our birds because we have a consistent temperature in this spot. Um, I will take them home to the farm in about three days when they're 
really getting some legs. When they really start to like eat and drink and muck stuff up and they look like they're solid, I will take them home and put them in the real ink uh, brooder, which is a bigger brooder. And what I'll do in there is I'll run two heat lamps just in case one goes out. So two is one, one is none, Stephen Harris. <laughs> and uh, no one knows what that means. And uh, yeah, so obviously, you know, one blows out, you still got one back up. And I'd like to do that here, but I don't. So what I do here, I don't want to put two heat lamps in that little tote. Um, and I don't have room for a bigger tote. <laughs> so what I'll do here is I'll almost always use a brand new heat bulb in this spot, all right? And whatever, it's 10 bucks for three, just get them, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm gonna switch from the infrareds over to the uh, the ones that don't, or not infrared, I think I'm switching to infrared, but whatever. The ones they use for lizards that don't put any light out and they just emanate, em emanate heat, whatever the word is. Anyway, that's uh, that's what I do. So I'll pack them little little buggers in a, on a nice warm day, and if not, I take a cooler and I use a cooler, <laughs> and I bring them over because they'll hold some heat inside a cooler, because that, obviously that'll just insulate. And I take them home and I fire them into my uh, my real brooder, and then that thing's bigger and it really cranks them out. But that's uh, some tips on how you want to brood your quail without killing them. <laughs> so uh, good luck. Thanks for watching, John from Dowie Farm.